Hello there, today we're going to be creating this effect. I've already created it, I tried to create it with you guys, but it's not gonna work really good. The quality is not gonna be that great. So the best way to teach you this stuff is to create them myself, to play around with everything. And then when I have something that's uh, completely ready to presentation, then I can re easily present it to you. So this is how you'll have it in the game the uh, smokes coming out of the character and it's quite nice you can have it both ways uh, both up the from the upper body and the lower body I decided since my skeletal meshes are based on meta humans I really can't do it easily so I decided I'd like to have it both uh, just in upper body, but maybe I could do it the other way as well. Let's try, let's try together. Okay, so to create that, I already have it here though. Uh, go into your particles, if you don't have a folder called Particles or Niagara or whatever, just be organized, that's what, all I'm saying. Right click, um, Niagara system, uh, a new system from selected emitter, the emitter should be fountain, uh, add it and then hit finish and name it something. Then we'll come here, you don't need to do anything around here. We'll come here in the properties tab, this should be GPU compute sim. It's gonna make it a little bit more performant, um, so the whole everything, all the load will be for GPU to process. It's a better idea to do it this way in mobile and PC. To, because CPUs are a little bit weaker than GPU. GPU is unbelievably strong. So uh, bounce mode fixed. It's not going to be dynamic. GPU compute sim. Uh, and after you've set this one up, come here, set fixed bounds, and then we go to the emitter state. Everything is a default value, so the loop duration is 5 and we're not going to change the scalability mode because the particles always in front of the camera since we're always seeing the character. And then uh, if you have this one just delete it, you don't want it or disable it like this, we need a spawn rate here, this one, uh, and for that I'm multiplying a user parameter by uh, a number which is in my case 2 because I want it to be performant and also this user parameter is going to be changed later on when the player wants to actually scale the graphics so in my game I have an option called in graphics menu I have an option for the particle quality changing this particle quality will actually lower that uh, use a parameter here this one right so for example high is 5 normal is 3 and low is 1 so and that will be multiplied by these two and then in the initialized particle we will have everything set up actually lifetime mode is random lifetime mode is random uh, and mean is 1 and 2 is the maximum amount and color you can actually change it to whatever you want for me I want it to be a little bit of a bluish like icy kind of and uh, in the sprite size I'd like to always choose random uniform and for my mean it's 50 for my max it's 70 and we don't really need anything else this one will be spawned on character, so to do that we need a skeletal mesh location. Just type in skeletal mesh location. And then the mesh will be uh, whatever skeletal mesh you're using. For me I'm using the metahuman and then I have to uh, use the skeletal mesh for metahuman to do so. Instead, I can just go ahead and try the mannequin to see if that's gonna work better. Let's see.
it's the same because I've attached it to my torso. Maybe if I attach it to the um, capsule component, it will work better. Or maybe if I detach it from everything. It's not attached at all. Okay, so... Oh, fix it now. It, it wasn't fixed, okay. So the skeletal mesh needs to have access to CPU. If you just type in CPU, allow CPU access. If you don't do that, it will... Okay. I didn't want to do that, but anyway. Uh, it will just throw an error at your face, so you can just fix it here, no problem. And now it's kind of working. Let's see if it works in the game. Yeah, it is working in the game, actually. But we need a higher spawn rate. Something like maybe 5 would be a bit better. But that's the thing, if you want to um, contain more space, you need more particles to be shown in this screen. Yeah. Um, the thing is that maybe I want it to be based on... So the mesh sampling type is I was using surface triangles and now I'm trying skeletal bones. Okay, skeletal bones is looking a little bit better. Uh, but I don't know if it's too much. Since we're working on mobile, it's, it can easily be too much really fast but that's the thing if you want to go this way that's the way to do it I don't want to do that and since I don't want to do that I'm going to set my torso as my skeletal mesh and my um, surface triangles and my spawn rate will be 2 multiplied by 5 so it's 10 Let's see. This one needs to... where is it? Uh, the effect needs to be attached to the torso. In, in your character. So, when you're dragging your character inside your blueprint make sure it's attached to the skeletal mesh or if you want it to be attached to some specific skeletal uh, just attach it there in my case I want torso so I'm going to attach it to torso okay uh, everything's cool and then I want a little bit of uh, a velocity because I want them to go out uh, to outside of the mesh so, I'll type in we'll add velocity and then the velocity mode will be in cone velocity speed is 15 uh, cone axis is 1 in the Z axis that's kind of important uh, cone, angle, cone angle is 80 and that's it particle stats, no change uh, I was using a curl noise force, but that didn't really look good. It was just making everything a little bit more chaotic, so no need to, that, do, to do that. This is uh, auto, uh, going to be added in automatically because you're using velocity. And now we need a sub UV animation. So now, since we're using a smoke, we need an animation. We need a flipbook. So you can just type in sub UV animation and then 
in the animation this sprite renderer must be set to sprite render otherwise it won't work because we're using a sprite right now and this is the speed of the animation if you want it to be slower just go lower if you want it to be faster like this just go higher for me one is a great value but keep in mind if you're changing the lifetime you need to change this accordingly because this is based on lifetime and I'm using a scaled color because this is translucent uh, this is transparent uh, transparent and um, kill color this one right here this is transparent and I'm using the transparency to make them fade in and fade out so in the scale alpha you can just type in um, curve so floats from curve and then add some you can right click and add key uh, just create a transparency like this so this is 0 0 this is 0 0.1 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.8 0 0.3 and this is again back to 0 a scale curve is uh, something that will be multiplied by this curve that you've created so you can manually change that as well in the sprite render you need to change the material too so this is the most important part uh, about the texture uh, I have there's a link in the description to another video you can go ahead and download the texture from that if you don't have any textures if you do just use your texture this is an 8x8 texture uh, I'm using the maximum text size of 512 because this is just a mobile game. It's not a PC game. For PC games, though, uh, I wouldn't go above 1024, by the way. Um, the material is unlit, translucent, and it's not two-sided. By the way, if you don't know how to create a material, just right-click at the material like that. And then come in here, change this, uh, drag your texture in. This is the texture you're gonna be downloading from the description in the other video. And then hold the M on your keyboard for a multiply and a particle color. Color, this is pretty important. Uh, comes in here, and then this one goes into the emissive color. Depth fade is pretty important as well. So hold M to multiply this by this so you can easily uh, control the opacity within the scale color so this is related to this if you don't have this one then you're not going to be um, free to use this one this will do nothing and then a depth fade because the um, effect is going to be colliding with the character a lot and we don't want it to look really bad. Let me show you how it's gonna look if we don't have that. No, it's flipping with the character, it doesn't look good. So we need the depth fade. And this is the texture you're gonna be downloading again that's a pretty important part and the material after you've created it you will find it in the content browser and then you'll just select it here everything's a default value except the sub UV so sub UV is normally not expanded you'll expand it sub UV blending enabled this is important so it makes it to be a little bit more smooth uh, since it's just an 8x8 texture so there's not a lot of frames in it so the animation will be like this a little bit and it will just be smoothing it out uh, a little bit it will create some frames in between so it's a little bit more smooth and sub image size in this texture it's 8x8 you can just count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that's it 8 for x 8 for, 8 for y 8 for x 8 for y and that's it and then you can find it in the content browser 
go into the third person character or whatever character you're using and then just drag it in under your torso or under wherever you want actually and that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit that like button and have a great day bye